RPGs, they're just so nice. Specifically JRPGs, actually. I don't know, something about them is just so cool. It could be the weapons, the immersive worlds, hell even the music could be what sells it for me sometimes. But what really gets me in absolute awe is the character designs. And since I have no better way to make a segue, I'm just going to start talking about Yasuda Suzuhita. He's basically a Japanese manga artist as well as an illustrator and character designer and man this guy has done a lot of work for a lot of things. He's worked on illustrations for light novels such as Don Machi and Durara. He's also in charge of his own manga called Yozako Quartet. But how I discovered him is through his character designs from JRPGs like Devil Survivor 1 and 2. He's also done character designs for games for Digimon Story Cyber Sleuth and even this scrolling shooter game called Calgius, but I don't know anything about that. And before I continue with the video, I just want to say that there's only going to be one rule for my artist analysis videos, and that is I must be familiar with at least one of their works. If that they are a manga artist, I have to either finish the manga that they have worked on, or at least be up to date with it, and if they're a character designer, I need to at least play one of the games that they worked on. I am doing this because I feel that it's necessary for me to at least have the context in which their work is used. Personally, it is not enough for me to just see their work and just say, oh, that looks nice and call it a day. Anyway, back to Yasuda. To segmentate this video, I will start with the things that I like, then the things that I'm not so fond of, and I'll end it off with things that I just want to talk about because I have a lot of things to talk about with this artist, so um, yeah. First of all, I find that his character designs are always filled with like a really high energy that just screams as to what their personality is. For example, let's look at Yamato from Dulcera 2. By just looking at the gesture, you get the feeling that this is a guy that really runs shit. Like look at him, that's the posture of someone that's about to drop his hand to sail him to a firing squad to fill someone with lead. To take another example from a piece that he's worked on, let's take Izaya from Durara. His back is turned to the viewer and his hands are in his pocket which really gives him this mischievous secretive vibe and lo and behold that's exactly who he is. And I know I'm not the most unbiased point of view since I do have prior knowledge of the characters and the series that they're from but hey what can I do? I can't go back in time and forget all that I watched although I would like to, to re-experience these characters and stories. Another thing that I like about his art is something I'd like to call his squad shots. I don't know why but I'm a total sucker for those squad shots. Seeing a bunch of characters all together in one page is just so cool for me. And Yasuda has a way of having a bunch of those characters all together while making it cohesive to the story that's trying to be told. Let's go back to Zelda Survivor 1 and 2 and their promotional arts for the games. First of all, excellent use of color. Each game has all the characters are incorporated around that central color. On top of that, by looking at the box art for Dull Survivor Overclocked, what can you get from it? Well, the first thing you can see is that the first three characters from the bottom has a look of either distress or look of someone that's about to face something steadily approaching, which does reflect the constant clock that our main characters have to face and be wary of. And you know, the other characters are just doing their own thing with their stoic faces. Except this guy here, over at the corner. With him being the only one with that big grin and being here at the corner, could tell that he is someone that's going to play a big role in the game, but I'll refrain from any spoilers. Now if you look at the box art for Devil Survivor 2, well the Japanese version specifically, it goes absolutely bananas with it. It adds even more characters, and while I do say it sacrifices a bit of the storytelling by giving a lot of these characters um, this face, I can't really blame him, or Atlas for that matter because it is a sequel and whoever is getting this should kind of get a gist of what they're getting themselves into, but it's still a nice squad shot. Uh, also look at this Durara squad shot. Once again, I'm not going to spoil too much, but this shot really does show the parallels between the three characters in the front and the three characters in the back. He just really does these shots really well, they're always a sight to see, and I apologize if I'm not mentioning any work from Digimon or much of his other works, but I've never really played them or got myself familiar with them, so I can't really give a proper explanation to those things. Now on to the things that I absolutely just not I'm not with it. As much as, I, much as I like to gas this man up, I will say that one thing that I'm not too fond of are the repetitive faces of his characters. I know it's an like an anime manga thing, but I'm still gonna bitch about it. The faces he draws are almost all alike, which in turn makes his characters he draws look so damn similar to one another. 
Well, if you want proof, look at this. Who's this character? Well, that's Mikado, right? From Durara? Nope. That's Akina from Yozakura Quartet. Well, how about this one? This is also Akina too, right? Nope. That's Mikado. It's not just the face, it's the hair. And sometimes even the clothing can be one for one. That is one reason why I don't like to consider clothing to contribute to a fur design so much, since it could just easily be drawn off for something different. Designs can also be very derivative from one another. And I know I just said that I can't really give my opinion on games or works that I'm not so familiar with, but I have to bitch about it too. Why does K. Parsifal from Caldrius look like Arita from Digimon Cyber Sleuth? Which in, t which in turn looks like the main character from Dell Survivor 2. Did no one else catch this? Did he himself not catch this? These three are so slimmer down to even the color scheme. And try to tell me that at least these two don't share obvious similarities. It's just something that I noticed from his work that really baffles me. One thing I do want to mention about him is his development as an artist. When you look back at the first volume of Durara, you can see what the first designs of Mikado and Omri were going to be. Now if we jump two volumes ahead to volume 3, you can see his designs are, you know, they're coming along. And if we jump another two volumes to volume 5, you can really get a grasp of how far he has come as an artist. I really like being able to see his actual process through his work he's done in real time. Another thing he's known for is um, his fan service, especially the way he draws his, um, yeah. Overall, he's a pretty cool artist that you should definitely check out if you have the time. He's got these art books that you should really check out. He's also got a Twitter if you want some behind the scenes action. This is my first installment in the artist analysis series since I don't actually see that much people doing videos talking about the artists behind many of the anime, manga, light novels, or even games that we indulge ourselves in. And I sort of want to bring that to more of like the main light. I'm still going to be uploading my time lapse drawing videos, but this is just something else I wanted to do on the side. If you liked what you watched, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you for watching. For watching.